Today we're going to do solving rational equations. The first thing we're going to do is cross multiply these two equations. And then you want to distribute your numbers. And then you just want to solve the equation by subtracting 9x from both sides and subtracting 15 from both sides. And then you want to divide by 3. And you want to make sure that that does not make the denominator equal to 0, and it doesn't, so it is a solution. Um, the next problem is a mixture problem. An aloe is formed by mixing two or more metals. Sterling silver is an alloy compressed of 92%, 92.5% of silver and 75.5% of copper by weight. You have 15 ounces of 800 grade silver, which is 80% silver and 20% copper by weight. How much pure silver should you mix with the 800 gram silver to make sterling silver? So, percent of copper in mixture, weight of copper in mixture, times the total, divided by the total weight of the mixture. So it's 7.5 over 100. That's the percent of copper in mixture. And then 20% of copper times the 15 ounces over X plus 15, you have 15 ounces of 800 grade silver. So you would cross multiply here and then distribute and then solve the equation. So the mix of 25 ounces of pure silver with the 800 grade silver to make sterling silver. Okay, and this is a work rate problem. You clean a park in two hours Working together, you and your friend can clean the park in 1.2 hours. So, of course, it takes less time working together. Let T be the time in hours your friend would take to clean the park when working alone. Complete the table. Hint, work done equals work rate times time. So one park over T hours, your work done there is 1.2 over 2, and your work done here is 1.2 over T. The work to clean one park So you would add the two rates together, and that cleans one park. And then you can use that equation to help you figure out how much time your friend needs to work alone. So you're going to multiply both sides by the common denominator, which is 2t. 
and then the two will cross out with the first fraction, the t will cross out with the second fraction, and nothing will cross out with the other side of the equation. And it takes three hours. Okay, solving by using the least common denominator. When a rational equation is not expressed as a proportion, you can solve it by multiplying each sides of the equation by the least common denominator of the rational expression, which is what we did in the last word problem. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 4x. And in the first fraction, the x will cross out. The second fraction, the 4, will cross out. And in the third fraction, the x will cross out. Then you just have to do simply multiplying what you're supposed to multiply, and then solve the equation as we know, already know how to do. And you check your answer by making sure 8 is allowed in the denominator, and it is. The next one, the common denominator is x times x minus 5. So in the first fraction with just the 1, nothing crosses out. In the second fraction, the x minus 5's cross out, and in the third fraction, the x's cross out. And then you do some distributing. Then it's going to be a quadratic, so you've got to clean it up a little bit. Do all your cleaning and sweeping it up until it's set equal to 0. And then you have to factor by finding two numbers to multiply to positive 15 and subtract to negative 16. And then you want to double check to make sure they both work in the equation, and they do. So you've got your answers. All right. Solve an equation with extraneous solutions. So make sure you check your solutions as we've been doing. So you want to make sure you factor out the denominator so we can factor out our difference of squares there. And we can see that our common denominator is x minus 3 times x plus 3. And then you can cancel out an x minus 3 with the first fraction, both with the second fraction, and an x plus 3 with the third fraction. Don't forget to distribute your negative 4x. And then let's do some cleaning up, getting all the like terms combined and bringing everything to one side and setting it equal to 0. Then because you can divide out a 2 or factor out a 2, let's do it to make it easier to solve. Then I'm going to use guess and check here. So I'm two things to multiply to 2x squared is 2x and x. Two things to multiply to negative 9 is negative 3 and 3. And so I figure out where the appropriate place is. And then you can see my two solutions here. And obviously negative 3 doesn't work, so I only have one solution. And in the last problem, I want to factor my difference of squares and I want to multiply the common denominator of x plus 1 times x minus 1. In the first fraction, x minus 1 crosses out. In the second fraction, nothing crosses out. In the third fraction, everything crosses out. So I'm going to distribute and then I'm going to FOIL first, then distribute my negative 5. and clean it all up and then I don't like to factor with a negative in the front so I want to divide out the negative and factor. So I want to make sure I multiply to 5x squared is only 5x and 1x and then 
negative 6, 3, and negative 2, and I have to just guess and check. And check by multiplying outer and inner and make sure it adds up to negative 7x. Then I solve each factor and I look at my solutions and it turns out they both work. So we're all good. Okay, so uh, next you guys are going to want to um, work on your practice. Hopefully you have looked at the answers for your classwork. And you want to work on your practice. Okay, have a great weekend and I'll see you on Monday.